Hey, it's Adam, and in this video, I will be proving to you beyond the shred of a doubt that the entire universe is occurring within you and within your consciousness. And also that this idea that the world and the universe is outside of me, is separate from me, is external to me, that idea is false and has actually been disproven by science over a hundred years ago. So most of us, 99% of people, probably including you and including everyone that you know, uh, believes that the world is physical, is occurring in three dimensional space and time and is outside of you. So when you get in your car to go for a drive and you're driving on the road, you fundamentally believe that the road that you're driving on is outside of you. It, that it's a physical three-dimensional road that is occurring within space and time. And the purpose of this video is to prove to you beyond the shred of a doubt, in a very non-technical and simple way, why this way of thinking is completely delusional. And I'm also, uh, it's also very important that you understand that what I'm sharing here is not an ideology. I'm not sharing with you a belief system or a philosophy. This isn't some type of conspiracy theory, what I'm going to be sharing with you is an accurate perception of the present moment. So this has nothing to do with you believing me. This has nothing to do with something that I read somewhere on the internet and I'm trying to infect your mind with my ideology. This has nothing to do with that. This has to do with what is the act, what is reality? What is the actual case? Uh, what is the truth? And of course, everything I'm saying in this video can be proven by you in your own direct experience as I'm talking. So let's get into it right now. So I'd like to start with the story of Galileo. This is a very important story to understand how the human mind traps itself in wrong ways of thinking. So in the 1300s, everybody believed that the, the solar system revolved around the earth, right? This was a, a common belief. Everyone believed that everything, all the other planets revolved around the earth. This was the, the, this was the truth back then. This is what everyone believed. So Galileo, he found a telescope and he started doing some science and he realized that this wasn't the case. He realized that the earth was actually just one planet that was revolving around the sun. And this was a big, big deal back then. When Galileo went to go tell the the scientists of the time, which were the priests back then, when he went to go tell them of his, of his discoveries, nobody believed him. And they thought that Galileo was a, a, a nutcase. And in fact, they prosecuted him and exiled him uh, for the rest of his life. So now 700 years later, it's pretty obvious to us that the sun... I, uh, that the earth revolves around the sun. It's clear as day. We, we have science. We know that this is true. But back then, that wasn't obvious. And when Galileo uh, was trying to change the commonly held belief system, he came, he was met by a lot of resistance. Now, the reason why I'm telling you this story is because what I am telling you here that the external world isn't real. There is actually no world that is outside of you. 
the world was never outside of you. In fact, for your entire life, the, the whole universe has been occurring within you. So what I'm saying here, it might seem pointless. It might seem philosophical. It might seem woo-woo or new age. But um, it's important that you set aside your judgment just for a couple minutes as we realize that the truth is going to sound insane at first because it goes runs counter to everything that you already think is true. So when Galileo was telling people that the earth revolved around the sun, everyone thought that he was a conspiracy theorist. Everyone thought that he was a, a new age kook. People thought that he was a, a devil worshiper. So it's just important to understand that the mind has a tendency to instantly demonize and dismiss ideas, especially about very fundamental things like what reality is. We tend to dismiss ideas that aren't familiar to us, that sound crazy. So that's why it's important to open your mind and realize that right now, you don't actually know what reality is. You have an idea, something that you absorbed from culture, something that your teachers told you or that your parents told you and that your friends told you, but you don't actually know what reality is. And that's very key so that we can continue this investigation here. So now I'm going to point to a couple of truths of your direct experience. So I want you to become aware now that all that exists is the present moment. This is this present moment is what is real. And in fact, it is the only thing that is real. This present moment right here, this one. Now, it's natural for you to have some objections to what I'm saying here. What's going to happen is the mind is going to come in and say, Adam, what are you talking about? What about, you know, the people that live in China? You know, they're not in this present moment here, but they're still real. They still exist. What about that moment two years ago? You know, it may not be here in this present moment, but that moment was still real. That moment still exists. Now, it's important that you have the ability to detach yourself from these thoughts. Because when you have an objection, right? When I say something like the present moment is the only thing that exists, right? And you have an objection, right? The, the form that the objection takes is in the form of a thought, you see? And where is that thought occurring? Notice how whatever objection you have, it's a thought, and that thought can't be occurring anywhere else except in the present moment right here. So if I say this present moment is all that exists, and you say, well, what about when I go to the museum and I see the dinosaur fossils? What about uh, those fossils? Those uh, were made 65 million years ago. Uh, isn't that proof that there's more than just this present moment? And then I would ask you, are you conscious that that is a thought that is occurring in the present moment? And there is only the present moment at all times. In fact, there is no time because it's only present. Now, it's also important to recognize what the present moment consists of. What is its substance? What is it made of? And you'll notice in your direct experience, again, I'm not trying to share with you some kind of philosophy or some kind of belief system. I'm just trying to point you to your present experience of life right here, right now. So it's important uh, to recognize that the present moment is made up of sensations. It's made up of senses. 
So we got sight, sound, taste, touch, smell, um, and also mind. We have thoughts as well. So in this present experience right now, notice that all you have are just senses. You just have sight, right? So I have a cup over here, right? I got a cup, right? So notice how uh, this isn't really a, a physical cup. It's not external from me. But what this cup is, is, is it's, it's a sight that is occurring within my consciousness. This isn't a cup. What this is, is the experience of a cup. And that experience is not external to me, but it's right here within me. So notice how you never experience any object as it is, quote unquote, but all you have is just the experience of the object. So for, so you've never actually seen a road, right? All you've seen is your experience of a road. Okay. Now you might say, well, Adam, what's the difference? Well, if you believe that the world is external to you, if you believe the world is outside of you, if you believe the world is physical, then what you also have to believe is that roads exist. There is such thing as a road, but it's impossible for me to ever have a direct experience of the road. That's because, let's say again, so I'm looking at this cup, right? If I'm assuming that this cup is outside of me, if I'm assuming the cup is, is physical and separate from me, then that means that this experience of the cup isn't what the cup actually is. Because you're, you're assuming that there's a, a physical cup, right? But that then there's also me experiencing the physical cup and you, you admit that that experience of the physical cup can't be what the actual physical cup is. Now, again, this is sounding very philosophical, but it's, it's actually very simple and very clear what I'm saying. What I'm saying is in order to imagine that the world is outside of you, you have to also imagine that you have never had a direct experience of the outside world because all you have is your experiences. All you have is your perceptions, right? So uh, the what I'm trying to point to in this video is that what is actually a more accurate way to understand and observe reality, a much more accurate worldview is to realize that in fact, there isn't a physical objective world, but the only thing that there is, is just pure experience. And that when you're looking at a cup, for example, what the cup is made of is the experience of a cup. So you're, as you experience the cup, what the cup is actually made of is that experience. So if, if you, um, if you think the world is physical, if you think the world is made of material, if you think the world is separate from you, you look at a cup and you think, okay, this cup is made of atoms or this cup is made of molecules, or this cup is made of matter or strings. And that matter has nothing to do with my experience. It has nothing to do with my consciousness. But as quantum mechanics has scientifically proven over a hundred years ago, along with all the mystics and sages and philosophers, what uh, they've proven is that your experience of the cup actually is the cup. That is what it is. This cup isn't made of matter, 
but it's made of your experience of it and also your thought about it. So everything you experience in reality, what it is, is an experience. That is its existential nature. What it exists as is experience. So again, I have a book here, right? This book, what it exists as is experience. This book is consciousness. It is made of experience. In the same way that when you're in a dream, right? And you're dreaming and you're making a video in your dream and you pick up a book, right? And you look at the book in your dream. So as I'm looking at the book in my dream, I think that the book is made of something material. It's made of some type of physical material, right? But let's say all of a sudden I have a lucid dream. So I'm holding the book and all of a sudden I realize that I'm dreaming. A big consciousness shift happens and I realize that I'm in a dream holding a book. Okay. Now all of a sudden the book is no longer made of anything material. What the book is actually made of is my mind. It's made up of pure consciousness, the substance of which is nothingness. It's, it's, it's void. The book in the dream is made of itself. It's made of the experience of the book and that's it and nothing more. So the book in the dream isn't made of atoms. It isn't made of molecules. It's made of the experience of the book. Now, what I'm trying to point to is that the waking state of consciousness is exactly the same as the dreaming state of consciousness. The main difference being that the dreaming state of consciousness is less consistent and it's less solid seeming. But they're both states of consciousness. They're both made of experience. And they're both occurring inside of you, inside of your consciousness. So, so there's, there's many objections that come up to what I'm saying here. And um, that's normal. Uh, there's the problem is what I'm saying here is actually it, it seems very radical. It seems uh, very like almost like a conspiracy theory. It seems almost like I'm part of a cult or it, it, I kind of seem like a like a nutcase and I'm aware of that. Uh, but what I would like you to notice is that what I'm saying is just it's more connected to your direct experience and it's more true than imagining that the world is physical and material. So now there's, there's a lot of uh, objections that come up. So, okay, Adam, what about uh, when the scientists, what about when they take out their microscopes and they observe the book? Okay. So they look at the book and they see that the book is made of atoms. They see that. Doesn't that mean that the book is made of atoms and that the book isn't made of experience or made of your mind? Now that's a good question. So um, become aware. Imagine you are a scientist, okay? And you are the one observing the book with a microscope. So you take out your microscope and you're observing the book to see what it's made of, okay? So you're observing the book and you see some atoms and some molecules. That's cool. But notice that those atoms and those molecules, those are occurring within your consciousness and they exist as an experience. And that's all they exist as. Those atoms aren't separate from you. They're not outside of you. They're not external to you, but they're actually within you. 
the observer and the object that is being observed are intertwined. Notice how there is no object, there can't be any molecules, there can't be any books unless you are here to witness them. Now this is what quantum mechanics points to. And quantum mechanics has, uh, it was uh, beginning development over a hundred years ago. And it's funny because uh, as, as humans, if you, if you study the past and you study the history of scientific revolutions, it has always taken a very long time for cutting edge scientific discoveries to percolate down into the rest of culture. So if I go out and ask some random person on the street, is the world external to you? They'll probably say yes. They don't, that person doesn't understand the ramifications of quantum mechanics. And that person also doesn't understand what the ancient yogis have been saying for thousands of years, that the entire world exists within you. Again, this isn't a philosophy. This isn't an ideology. This is science. This is what is observable in your experience. And you'll notice if you observe your experience right now, there is no external world. What you think the external world is, so like, so become conscious. Let's say you're watching this in your house, in your room. So you're in your room. Become conscious of the room around you, right? You think the world, that, that, the, that the room is outside of you. You think that you are in the room. Become aware that in fact, the room is in you. Not in your body, because remember, you aren't, you aren't the body. You are consciousness. You are the entire direct experience. You are the entire field of experience. Anything that you can see, anything that you can experience is happening within you, within your awareness. And it is you in the same way where if I'm dreaming, right? I'm dreaming that I'm sitting in my room. Okay, so I'm in my room in my dream. And then all of a sudden, I start to have a lucid dream where I'm aware that I'm dreaming. Now I can see clearly that this room that I'm sitting in is part of the dream and is part of my mind. Meaning that my mind literally constructed the room that I'm sitting in, in the dream. So I, I, I have a body in the dream. The body in the dream is sitting in the room in the dream. But that whole thing is occurring within my mind as I sleep. And again, what I'm pointing to is that is exactly the case of what is happening right now. Exactly the same. That's why... Spiritual awakening is called spiritual awakening because you are awakening to the fact that you are in a dream. Not you're in a dream in the sense of, um, you're not dreaming in the sense of you're going to wake up later and then everything will be fake. That's not what I mean. What I mean is when I say dream, I mean that reality as it is now, is made of consciousness. It's made of your mind. Then you might ask, Adam, if, if, uh, if reality is made of my mind, why can't I change it? Because in a dream, when I become lucid, then all of a sudden, I can imagine a pink elephant, and then there's going to be a pink elephant appearing in the room right beside me. So... It's important to understand that for me to say that reality is a dream doesn't mean that reality doesn't follow 
any type of physical rules or laws. Because even while you're dreaming, notice how the dream has self-consistent laws and self-consistent rules. So when you're in a dream, you can't walk through a wall because you've imagined that that wall is physical and for you to walk through it, that would break the laws. And that is uh, the same, that's the case with this reality right here. This reality follows consistent rules and laws that can't be broken. Now, there are many, many, many reputable accounts of extremely enlightened beings like yogis or spiritual masters who are able to break the laws of physics, such as levitating or materializing objects in their hand instantly, or curing their own cancer, or performing otherwise known as miracles, which break the laws of physics, because these beings, these highly enlightened beings, are lucid in the dream. And there are many eyewitness accounts, many, many cases of these yogis, quote unquote, breaking the laws of physics. So uh, that answers the question of if I'm dreaming, then why can't I walk through walls? The reason why you can't walk through walls is because you are bought in to the idea that reality is physical. And if I am postulate, I am presenting to you that if your consciousness is high enough, if you have a high enough awareness of the present moment, enough awakening, then it is actually possible for you to bypass certain laws of physics, which is pretty insane if you think about it. Now, uh, what, are, what, are, what are some other objections to what I'm saying? So another objection to what I'm saying is, uh, Adam, why hasn't anybody told me about this? Why doesn't my mom know about how all of reality is made in the mind? Why does my mom think that reality is physical? Why do the people on the news think that reality is physical? Why didn't anyone tell me this in school? Now, uh, back to Galileo's story about how he discovered that the universe did not revolve around the earth, but in fact, the universe revolved around, uh, not the universe, the solar system revolved around the sun. It's important that you realize that just because everyone believes in something, that doesn't make it accurate and that doesn't make it metaphysically true. That's a big one. So just, you know, we realize that our culture is consistently wrong about things. In the 60s, if you were gay, if you were homosexual, you could get beat up. And that was okay. That was common. That was seen as the norm. If you were gay and someone beat the shit out of you, that was fine in the 60s. Oh, he's a homo, right? And that was the norm. That was commonly accepted. And if I were to make a video in the 60s, if technology existed, talking about how homosexuals deserve equal rights and how they are human beings that have feelings and are a completely natural and normal phenomenon, then everyone would think that I'm crazy. And they would say, Adam, but the people on the news think that homos are bad. And the, my parents think that gay people are bad. So that means they must be bad just because everyone else believes it. Now to expand the metaphor, notice that our, uh, our culture is a couple hundred years behind on their metaphysics and their belief of what reality actually is. 
if you go back and you study the quotations of the old, the, the pioneers of the quantum revolution, so Max Planck, Niels Bohr, Schrodinger, if you actually study their quotations, what they will say is, what good quote from Max Planck is, I regard consciousness as fundamental. Everything that we imagine to exist postulates consciousness, meaning that everything that we imagine to exist also in, implies that someone is there to be conscious of it. He says, consciousness is fundamental. We can't get behind it. That was a little paraphrase of Max Planck's quote. This man lived a hundred years ago and he realized what I'm saying in this video. Everything is occurring within you, within your consciousness. Now, another objection that people have will, will say, Adam, okay, cool, but how does this affect my life? How does this practically help me make more money? Because this kind of seems like a waste of time thinking about, right? Okay, cool. Everything happens in my mind, but that doesn't actually change anything. Now, uh, you have to be pretty short sighted to think like that because um, notice that this completely turns everything you think to be true on its head. And now, if you start to realize for yourself what I'm saying and you grasp it in your own awareness, now you're going to have to pay a lot more attention to your own internal state. You're going to have to pay a lot more attention to the way you're feeling, to your own spiritual development, to your own health, to your psychological and also physical health. Because no longer is the world some dumb three-dimensional physical sandbox but now you realize that reality is actually created by your experience and by your mind and is shaped by your mind and your consciousness so now it will become natural for you to do practices such as meditation such as yoga such as psychedelics that are aimed at positively affecting your consciousness. And you realize that by developing my own internal development, I am actually developing my success in the external world. Because you realize that there is no external world. So if I can change my internal state, I can directly change the world. This is the law of attraction, and this is a grand awakening to a new level of consciousness, which is very liberating and will also give you a lot more material success with your business and with your relationships and with your health. So realizing that reality is not physical is one of the core realizations of all of spirituality. So now we are more open, open to new experiences and we're more open to actually investigating for ourselves what reality is and what it's made of. And no longer do we give our authority away to the scientists, to the priests. We don't wait for them to tell us what reality is. We take it into our own hands and investigate for ourselves using many of the practices which I share on this channel. So thank you so much for listening. That's a good way to end, up, end off this video. If you're still not fully convinced about what I'm saying or you have questions, all, all that stuff, that's all good. You can leave that in a comment below. If this video intrigued you, share it with your friends, leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. 
I make videos like this. The purpose of this channel is to help you spiritually awaken to your true nature and to understand reality and how it works. I'm on this journey myself. It's so interesting and it's fun and goes a lot deeper than I ever thought when I initially started four years ago. And I'm so excited to share with you many of my deep insights such as this one. Uh, thank you so much for listening and I hope you have yourself an amazing life.